Herzlich willkommen zurück auf unserer schönen Beanscom-Bühne. Und bei mir ist jetzt ein ganz besonderer Herr, und zwar Tom Heaton, der ist der Game Director von einem Titel, der gestern erst angekündigt wurde, und zwar The Dark Pictures Anthology. Und das ist ähm, von Supermassive Games. Die haben vorher unter anderem Ante Dorn gemacht. So, um, welcome to our stage. Thank you very much. Great that, you, uh, that you're here. No, thank you for having me. Nice. Um, so you're from, from Mass, uh, Supermassive Games. Um, you made Until Dawn, sure. but you made also the VR experiences Until Blood, uh, uh, Until Rush, sorry. Rush of Blood. So, <laughs> that's the name. <laughs> And The Impatient for sure. PlayStation VR. That's right, yeah. That's, that's been great. Uh, then Bravo Team also yep. for PlayStation VR yep. and Hidden Agenda for PlayLink. That's right. So yes. that's um, we've been busy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> a really busy time. And now you have the Dark Pictures anthology, yeah. uh, which is uh, new, and which is not PS4 exclusive. It is multi-platform. Nice. So PS4, Xbox, and PC. Cool. Um, and I would say, liebe Leute, um, I would say we're going to show the trailer because oh. you announced it yesterday. Yeah. Uh, um, and viele Leute wissen natürlich noch nicht, um, was es damit auf sich hat. Deswegen lass uns doch erstmal in den Trailer schauen und dann rede ich ein bisschen mit dem Herrn an meiner Seite über den neuen Titel. I've never been down there before. Down. Diving. This is Alex. What's up, man? Conrad. Good to finally meet you, Conrad. This is Brad, by the way. My little bro. So is everybody on board and ready to go? Who wants to find some sunken treasure? You good? More or less. What do you know about this wreck? Just rumors. It was insane. It was like traveling through time. Should have never gone down to that plane in the first place. Oh, damn. Every single thing you bring back has an essence. I told you to leave everything down there alone. We have unexpected guests. That's creepy. <laughs> uh, so you are the horror expert in the video game uh, business, I would say. Uh, thank you very much. Until Dawn have been a horror game, and um, so this is now also a horror game. But it isn't um, a full game. It is an anthology. So um, what could you tell me about okay, that? Okay, so, so yeah, what we announced is the Dark Pictures Anthology, uh, which is a series of cinematic horror games. Uh, and exploring the various subgenres of horror. Cool, uh, and um, we're going to play the first adventure game. Exactly. So they're in, all, in a few minutes. Yeah, um, all the games in the in the series are independent of each other. They're standalone games. Uh, you can jump in any point in the series. Uh, they've all got unique characters, unique settings, uh, unique stories. How many games are there in? Could you announce it? Well, uh, we sat down and tried to work through all the various subgenres of horror. Right? There's zombie movies, there's, there's a cult, uh, there's, there's a home invasion, haunted house, there's loads. And we got down, we worked out of 39 uh, subgenres of horror. So we, we've got plenty of work to do there. Okay, great. <laughs> um, but how many episodes are in development for this anthology? We are cu we're currently working on three episodes oh. uh, or, or three games. We don't really call them episodes because they're, they're, they're not linked. So we're currently working on three games. Uh, yeah, and Man of Medan is the first, is the first in the series. Fine. Um, but what made you decide to bring back uh, the horror genre not as a full game but an episode? Um, what is the, we the, just thought the, it was the thought a, it, behind it? Yeah, it was, a, it was a really good fit for our studio. You know, we loved trying to sit down and trying to work out really strong narratives. Uh, really engaging characters uh, and not be limited by one game. So an anthology allows us to go into those subgenres 
uh, think about them, have fun with them, just make really compelling experiences out of those. Cool. Is the full development team of Supermassive Games working on this title, or uh, do we have something, other uh, things beside of it? Uh, we have got a very large team. I can't talk about anything else during the studio, but we've got a very large team uh, on the Dark Pictures series, uh, mostly at the moment working on Man and Madan, um, some of them working on... How many other people games. are working on Supermassive? Uh, a, a, a we're, we're, we're somewhere around uh, 150, I think. That's impressive. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, you know, this is our 10-year anniversary uh, coming up soon. Uh, um, you know, we started, like all, all, all games studios, we started very small uh, and we've grown and it's uh, been a very exciting journey. Awesome. Um, which engine did you use? Is it the same engine as Until Dawn? No, or? this is, this is uh, made in the Unreal engine uh, and we have got a, a team of... of, of Of programmers, artists, technical artists, animators, all working really hard to get the best they can out of that engine. We, we want to give a really cinematic experience, something that looks and feels like a film. Great, and um, as, you, as you said, and Until Dawn was as a film, uh, film-like, yeah. so um, which inspirations did you, did you have? Uh, well, we go... We go uh, far and wide with inspirations. For this game, it was films like Ghost Ship uh, and Triangle, but there's also other films that have inspired it that I don't want to quite talk about because it spoilers some of the, the events and the developments in the plot. Uh, but yeah, we love our horror films. Uh, we, we love learning how they do things uh, and using that and bringing that to a new audience and, and, in, and reinterpreting it for games. In Until Dawn, you work with some actors like Rami Malek from yeah. Mr. Robot yeah. and other things. Um, did you work with any actors there too? Yeah, we, uh, we haven't announced the full cast, but we uh, worked with Sean Ashmore, uh, who you might know from the X-Men series, hmm. uh, and, he, and he was fantastic. I mean, the, the, the thing about uh, working with big actors is they, they really bring a lot. Of course, they bring the name recognition, but the, the, these guys are also very good. Uh, They, they give great performances, and it's, it's wonderful to kind of create a character and work for a long time on a character, and write that character from scratch, and then someone who's really good, a really good actor comes along and, and reinterprets it and brings that character to life. It's an incredible thing to see. Yeah, great. So you worked a lot with uh, motion capturing, I guess? Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, did you have, or do you have a motion capturing studio in your in-house? Uh, no, we don't. We don't do it in-house. We use uh, best in cast. We do, we do two separate motion capture, we do facial capture and, and voice, uh, and then we do a separate body capture, uh, and yeah, we put a lot of time and effort into that because it is so important. We try and give the actors uh, as much freedom as they can, it's really important, they have to know the characters, they have to understand the story, and, and, and have time with it just to, to, to get a really good performance, so that we're, we're bringing the story to life. Um, there are some things you, you do not as Or it's not the same thing as Until Dawn, but um, I guess there are also some consequences like in Until Dawn, aren't there? Yeah, absolutely. So, so choice and consequence is a big part of our game. Uh, the, the, the narrative is very branched. It's probably the most branching narrative that we have, uh, we've ever put together in a game. Uh, and as a player, you control that narrative, you make choices. Uh, which steer the game in, in perhaps unpredictable directions. Uh, so, it, it, you know, you have to think hard. Think hard about every choice. When you're playing the, the demo, make sure you think hard because, because every choice has a consequence somewhere down the line. You don't know if that's going to be a, a little thing or a really big thing. Oh, great. Um, you, you said it. Um, the first demo is about um, the first episode, The Man of Me... Me Medan. 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 Yeah, Medan um, what is this about? What is it about? Um, which characters are we seeing? Okay. Are we going to see in a few seconds? Okay, so the, so it's a, it's about four um, American tourists who uh, they've gone to the South Pacific for the holiday of a lifetime, a uh, diving holiday. They're interested in kind of historical wrecks that you get on the seabed there. Uh, so they chartered a ship, uh, the, and the, the captain comes with them. That's the fifth character. There's five playable characters, uh, and they, they they go down and they find this wreck, but then things start to go wrong in, in the way things do uh, in horror. Uh, they get caught up in a storm. They end up on this massive World War II freighter, uh, abandoned freighter in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Their radio isn't working. The, the ship engine is, is, is broken. They're stuck there. 
Uh, and on that freighter, they find something inside. They find they find terror inside, okay. and you have to you have to get them out. Get them out to safety. Great. Um, you told me something about the inspirations in uh, the movie business, but um, did you have some inspirations in games? Of course, yeah. So we looked at a, a classic uh, horror games, things like Resident Evil uh, and, and Silent Hill, and look at how they do things and, and, and sometimes use those techniques and sometimes work against those techniques. Uh, and we looked also at, at you know, that the narrative games is a developing genre. It's a very exciting genre to be in. Uh, so we looked at, at things like Quantix games, uh, Telltale games. You know, we play those. We love those games, and there's a lot to learn from them. And, and you know, we're excited to be making that sort of game as well. Cool. Um, most people know you from Until Dawn. Sure. But what are the main differences between Until Dawn and this um, anthology? Um, well. There's, the, the anthology is, is built from scratch uh, with a completely different... So this game has a completely different story, completely different set of characters. We learned some things from Until Dawn. We learned how important character was. We, we, we made really strong characters. We worked really hard to do that. Uh, but what, what amazed us and delighted us was how engaged uh, the, the, the audience got with those characters. They started making things up about the characters, they started writing fan fiction, they got into kind of the relationships of what the relationships should be rather than what they really were. So we, we, we really went with that in, in the new product. We tried to, to make that a very accessible thing for the players uh, so that the players control how the relationships develop and the plot may change based on that. Um, okay. But it's not set in the same world no, as uh, no. The Impatient was in, no, in the no, world of, of yep, Arthur Dawn? It's a completely different world. Okay. Uh, one of the things we do in development when we're thinking of ideas for the games is we try and find something in the real world that is, that is true or already exists, a myth or a legend. So that's often our, our starting point is, is, is something that people can investigate and, and find out. We did it in Until Dawn with Wendigos. That's a, that's a real myth. Uh, we've done it in this game, and we, we anticipate people digging into that and finding out about it. Okay, so we're going to start the demo in a few minutes. Yeah, we I just... Hope. One, two, okay. Okay. I'm really excited about it. I mean, uh, you announced yesterday, and it's great for us at, at the Gamescom to have some publishers and devel uh, developers um, who are... Who are um, Well, which um, um, announce any game on the Gamescom and not only at E3 sure. or Game Awards or whatever. Um, so it's really great. But you told me it's your first Gamescom, right? This is the first time I've been to Gamescom. You've never yeah. been here yeah. for uh, Until Dawn or no. your VR experiences. No, no okay. it's the first one. It's amazing. You know, it's so big. It's yeah. incredible, all the people. Yeah, as you can see. Yeah, I see them, yeah. As you can see. <laughs> um, had, did you have any other great VR experiences um, other than the impatient or the things you did? <laughs> the thi the thi yeah, we made a game uh, called Tumble for VR, which is like a little puzzle oh. game that you, you, you stack blocks. So that was one of the things I worked on. And it was, a, it was a very simple game, but it really informed how we did the other the VR games. It was, it was you know, useful in terms of control. Cool. Are there any plans to um, develop for VR again? Uh, can't talk about any, any studio plans, I'm afraid. Of, of course. Of course, but, uh, but I hope so. It's, um, there are not so many um, yeah, games for VR. It's a very exciting area. It's a very right. exciting area. But let's come finally to the episode, to the demo yep. for the first episode, which is uh, called The Man of Medan. Oh, no, just keep it on three, I think, is best. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Bandai Namco. Yep, very excited to be working with Bandai Namco. Yeah. It was great to be able to announce this, this yesterday. How long are you in the development process now? Uh, we have been, I've been working on this for nearly two years now. Uh, the, the, small, the team has built up, from the, initially it was a very small team working on it, but it's, it's gradually built up. Okay, should we play in English or in Well, German? that is up to you. Okay, Leute, wollt ihr lieber auf Englisch oder auf Deutsch? Einmal die Hand heben für Englisch. Einmal die Hand heben für Deutsch. Okay. It's, it's English. In English, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Subtitles on, off, okay. On for the people who can't speak English. Oh. 
audio. Yeah, I guess. Th there should be audio then. Okay. So there should be the there voice. Should, there should be audio, yeah, we should be hearing okay. the voice, yeah. Okay, hopefully it You can hold there, if you want to fix that, you can hold as long as you like there. Ah, ah. okay. So muss umstellen. Okay, dann müssen wir das nochmal umstellen. So you went straight in and made an emotional choice. You chose yeah. to be emotional without even thinking about it. Yeah. So that's how we knew it was true. I want to hear the voice in my head. Yeah, you know? yeah. it's important. <laughs> but I guess now People. we should hear it. Yeah, right. Whatever. Where's the old crust bucket skipper anyhow? So is everybody on board and ready to go? Nothing to report. Except that my clients are overprivileged and overpacked, out for adventure and without a clue. What do you know about this wreck? Just rumors and theories. We have unexpected guests. Take this. Use it if you have to. But I guess it's not normal to um, to have the opportunity to um, do the German voiceover now, or to hear the German uh, yeah. voiceover now. Uh, so it's, it's kind of, you're re really late in development. <laughs> yeah, I think we only have German subtitles, not voiceover. Ah, okay, yeah, I understand. So Where are you taking me? Now, why would I tell you? So already that first choice you made without thinking about it has affected the game. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's really spooky ship. All right, come out! Show yourself! Damn it! This fucking place is cursed. So you're playing as Fliss, captain the, the captain of the of the boat. This is a, this is kind of midway through the game. Hmm. Look at this. So okay. there's a secret, you found a secret, and in the game you'd be able to, we haven't implemented this yet, you'd be able to have a look at a page, you collect these secrets as you play, yeah, yeah. you find out the mysteries of the show. So the classic adventure things. Sure, you're trying to piece together what's going on. Oh. Always Ooh. makes me jump. <laughs> it's fucking jump scares. <laughs> I knew it's gonna happen, it still made me jump. Jesus! Wow. Oh Christ. Oh Christ. That guy. That guy's probably still right here with us. I mean, you die on the ship, your ghost stays on the ship. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh. What do you think happened to this guy? Say something like that. I don't know. It's like nothing I've ever seen. I don't know what the fuck this is all about. But we gotta keep moving and fight Olsen. Now. Are there any quick time events? There are some quick time events. You'll find some towards the end of this chapter. And they're, they're pretty hard, actually. You better be ready to do them. Oh. And is it like in Until Dawn that every person can die in every... Yeah, few absolutely. So, so everyone can live and everyone can die. Okay. And everything you do matters. So it, 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 everything counts, you know. Yeah.
Sie kostet modern. <laughs> You're on your own now. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to. But I like it a lot if there are some horror elements and you can't see what's yeah. happening there. Yeah, yeah. Your, it's, your it's imagination. Great. Yeah, right. It's great for the atmosphere. Come on. Try, go, try going back and looking at that picture that you couldn't look at before. This one? This one, yeah. So we call that a dark picture. You get a little glimpse of a, of ah, a possible future. Okay. Ooh. Maybe I should go to the front. Here? Is here anything? Just explore around. Okay. It's always worth exploring, though. It, 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 yeah, it does matter, you know. Yeah, right. It's a great part of, of adventure games. Yeah, so. exactly. Have you played all the uh, all the old adventure games like Grim Fandango? Yeah, certainly. We we you know we we've um it's a little while since I played that one to be honest. But uh, no, we've the adventure games are another little inspiration for this really. It's you know point and click and the adventure and the puzzle solving. Uh, yeah. It all feeds into this this genre. Definitely worth going left here. Could you warn me if there are some <laughs> some uh, creepy things <laughs> or the jump scares? I certainly will not. Oh, it's helpful, I guess. Nice. No, it's always useful, right? Yeah. So yeah, you can inspect objects, find out things about them. Sometimes the little hidden secrets on the objects. Could you run a bit faster? I think if you press L L1, you'll get a little bit of speed. Yeah, up there, but yeah. we're still fine-tuning some of these systems, you know. Mm -hmm. Not a nice place. <laughs> so another little secret, another thing that uh, on their own these secrets don't tell you much. It's when you put them together that the story yeah, starts to emerge. But I guess I should remember that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm hopeful. Brad. Still hopeful. Try to keep it together, okay? I'm trying to get us out of here. What? I'm sorry, Fliss. I just... Where are we? Do we know which way we're going? The 
this way or that way, that way? Oh, you head through that door, get your QT fingers ready. Kay. There's a little hint for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh. Ah! I'm too bad! Oh shit. So they have the decision. Ah! What are you going to do? I'm going to save him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why? <laughs> so, uh, that was the demo. But, um,. Is there a chance in this situation that both can die and the, uh, the game is going on? Well, I'd encourage people to head yeah. to the Bandai stand okay. in Hall 6 and have a so little uh, go for themselves. So the people are going you, you, it's or, or have the opportunity to Yeah, to absolutely. Play. It's playable right now. Yeah. Oh, cool. So, Leute, also wenn ihr auf der Gamescom seid, es ist anspielbar, sogar diese Demo auch ähm, hier auf der Gamescom. Aber wir haben jetzt ähm, als eine der Ersten die Möglichkeit bekommen, äh, diese Demo zu spielen und euch zu zeigen. Ich hoffe, es hat euch gefallen. Um, the time is over, unfortunately, but thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, it's been great. Yeah, I'm really excited about the game. Is there a release date? Uh, we, uh, early 2019. Okay, also, um, 2019 wird kommen, irgendwann im Frühjahr, I guess, February or something. Um, early, is, is you know. Okay, okay, <laughs> January, February, anything. Um, wir sind leider durch, jetzt geht's aber weiter natürlich mit dem Programm hier auf der Gamescom, und zwar mit Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Und wenn Call of Duty natürlich irgendwie jemanden bittet, dann kann es kein anderer sein als Schröck, denn Schröck ist im Interview mit David von der Haar und das ist drüben im Dodi büro deswegen bleibt auf jeden Fall dran, verpasst es nicht. Thank you for joining us, have a nice rest. Yeah, we'll do. <laughs> ähm, bleibt dran, gleich geht's weiter mit Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Tschüssi.